Welcome to July Set News to get top stories in crypto and bring out bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, Congress is out there pushing Bitcoin. And it's really going to be up to these key individuals to push us over the hump. So we're going to take a look at who is actually doing that as far as Congress uh, men and Congress women and senators and who is kind of laying to the wayside. Also, we'll take a look at uh, what's going on as far as the Cardano Virtual Summit, which is going on this weekend. And then uh, out of all the good news, I want to share something which is kind of in the middle of the road and what's, uh, what's going on as far as speed bumps, uh, El Salvador and their integration of Bitcoin. And then also I'm going to talk to you about a speaking event I'll be at, uh, which will be coming up October 15th through the 17th. So first of all, let's just jump right in and say the market is pretty flat. I mean, right now we got it at uh, 1.89 trillion. We were bouncing around two trillion, but here we are. The daily sentiment, uh, sentiment score given to us by Trade the Chain, uh, which uh, scrapes all the interwebs and all the different blog posts for the different exchanges, and also has a direct API into uh, Twitter and goes through millions and millions of uh, tweets. Says, hey, this is what people's sentiment is for Bitcoin today in the overall market. Now, if we take a look at the coins themselves, uh, it is Saturday, beautiful day today, I might add. But uh, I mean, we're just kind of just flat after that news of uh, China coming out and banning Bitcoin for the 20,000th time. So we've got uh, Bitcoin is up a whopping 0.81%. Watch out. Uh, 0.32 down for Ethereum, hovering around that $2,900 mark. Cardano is the big winner of the day, 6%. And I thought that this would actually happen with this virtual summit, but there's some good news on the horizon, which I'm gonna to share to you about what they just talked about and their big blockbuster partnership. So that's what's happening. Uh, and then Chainlink, 2% is up. And uh, well, we, I'll tell you exactly why that is. Tezos is up 4%, and that's pretty much it. That's what's happening. Also, we're going to take a look at uh, sentiment. Let's just go for the projected ranges today and see where we're potentially at. If you're a big trader, I am personally not. But if you are, take a look at uh, IOTEX, DeFi.Money, Rary Governance, Hive. I haven't seen that in a long time. Horizon, UMA, and Origin Trail. All right, so that's what's going on in the market. Let's just uh, jump right into today's big story, shall we? And that is that this, Congress pushes Bitcoin. And I am... I'm pretty happy about this. Uh, I like to see this, but before we get into who it is and who's actually doing the right things, I wanna just share with you a couple bit of uh, data points. And this was uh, from Mike Greff. So Mike, I wanna say thanks for sharing this. And uh, what he talks about here is, we just had this dump on Friday, which is kind of weird because uh, we also had uh, options expiration uh, and uh, for the traditional markets. And it just seems like everything kind of played into that part at the very right time at the right place. And Mike says, you know, look, a history of China's impact on Bitcoin price. In 2013, when Bitcoin was pretty much a, uh, a brand new baby, well, 2009, but it was kind of like an infant at this point, um, or toddler, who knows, 50% dip when China announced it was banning Bitcoin. That was in 2013, mind you. That was like eight years ago. And then, of course, they banned it again, 2017, and they banned it again, 2021. But that was a real ban. That was like, miners get out. I was so happy this happened. But when that happened, and we all agree it was a pretty big event, 19%. I think it was it, it could fluctuate a little bit more depending on uh, you know uh, what, what you look at. It might have been 25%. And then today's ban, which was uh, on Friday, yesterday was 5%. I've seen a little bit more, 8 9%, maybe even 10%. But still, you can see the point that Mike's trying to make, and it's a great point, which is China... We know you don't want Bitcoin and crypto. It's not going to make a, a big uh, dent. However, it still makes a dent with the uninitiated. And that's why uh, I put out this channel for the information so people can know exactly what's going on. And this is just FUD. This is FUD, FUD, F-U-D, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And it's just not relevant information at this point. So uh, Mike, thanks for that tweet. Also on top of that, uh, people will say, well, if China does, and China's a very smart country, very smart bunch of smart people and, and, and Xi Jinping and all those guys really well they also banned YouTube in 2009 which actually is a pretty good move I hate YouTube just kidding uh, YouTube in 2009 Facebook not a big fan of Facebook 2009 Google they, they banned it in 2010 and Wikipedia in 2019 uh, so when we, when we talk about how like oh you know what uh, they're just a you know they're just playing this 4d chess maybe they're not 
Because in all honesty, I mean, really what they want to do is really, I mean, it is a communist country. They want to control their people, right? It's not really good to control people when you have a, a lot of information being disseminated by the masses, such as in YouTube, such as in Facebook, and such as in, you, in Google. So with those types of things, then I can guarantee you they do not want their people to sidestep their central bank. So in that regard, sure. Uh, but it's just going to, you know, de-evolve and de-evolve into a more communist country and, um, you know, see how that plays out. It's not my... That's not my uh, role to talk about that. My role here is to talk about the good news and the bad news and what's going on in Congress. And this is something that I, I think was a step in the right direction. Uh, this is Senator Pat Toomey. If you have not followed him on Twitter, he's a must follow. Actually, all the people I'm gonna talk about today, uh, he's, they, he, they, they just get it. And Toomey comes out and says this, he goes, look, China's authoritarian crackdown on crypto, including Bitcoin is a big opportunity for the US. It's also a reminder of our huge structural advantage over China. I'm like, structural advantage? Uh, I'm listening. He says, uh, Beijing, Beijing is so hostile to economic freedom, they cannot even tolerate their people participating in what is arguably the most exciting innovation in finance in decades. Economic liberty leads to faster growth and ultimately a higher standard of living for all. And then we can debate this all, all day long. But uh, I got to tell you, the more, it seems like the more you shut off the rights to people, the more they want those rights back and the more they will fight for those rights. Now, I'm not here to uh, incite a revolution. That's not the point, the point of this channel. But uh, I do have to agree with Toomey. And I have to say that this is, a, again, this is a great uh, opportunity for America to step in and take the lead and say, this is what we want to do. All the miners come here. We're going to set forth regulation. We're going to give clarity and we're going to run with it. And we're going to be the global leaders for cryptocurrency and you know maybe even uh, uh, mass production and also maybe even AI. If you can get those three in the next 10 years, uh, you'll be a global uh, dominant leader. Anyhow, on top of that, uh, Toomey was the one that pretty much pressed uh, Gary Gensler, one of the, one of the uh, senators there and says, hey, look, Gens Gary, uh, you need to give us clarity. And you say it's all around us, but it doesn't make any sense because when I'm looking at it as a layman, doesn't make any sense to me. We did a video on this on September 14th. I will link at the very end. Fantastic information. It was a, it was a two hour uh, conference or a hearing, which I condensed into about uh, 20 minutes or so, which you can uh, just let, take a listen to later. But uh, Toomey is one of those champions of crypto. And I want to say thank you so much for doing the things that he does. On top of that, We've also got uh, Cynthia Loomis from Wyoming. She says, look, Bitcoin is bipartisan. Digital assets are apolitical. Other slogans welcome. And this is because uh, she, uh, Caitlin Long says, Senator Loomis just gave a big shout out to Senator Ron Wyden for their partnership opposing the broad definition of broker in the infrastructure bill. If you remember not too long ago, that bill came about and it was just an awful uh, writing the way that it was it was put forth. And because of all of our efforts, it almost got changed if it wasn't for one senator, I forgot that guy's name, who stood up and said, nope, I'm not going to uh, uh, append this and we're going to keep, keep moving forward. But uh, on the bright side, we've still got uh, some pretty big names. That's Loomis. And then this is uh, one of my favorites, Tom Emmer. I think he's from Ohio. And he said this, digital authoritarianism, China is forcing its citizens away from decentralized currency and onto the digital yuan so the CCP uh, can track all money movements. Uh, you fear Big Brother, but then you should also fear what the Fed might be designing. And uh, on top of that, Tom here also had uh, the folks over there at uh, Coinbase uh, come in and talk to him and tell him what's, you know, to, to, to kind of determine what's a security, what's a commodity. What's a currency? And he sat down with him and I said, and I said, hey, you know what's great about this is that uh, these people came in, talked to the, the representative and, they, and then Tom here didn't send them a Wells notice or try to sue them like the SEC did with Coinbase because that is the wrong move in my opinion. And this is what it all really all comes down to. So I know we hear about this this horrible news, this this awful news about the SEC is coming in, and and then Gary's really going to you know crack down. Super Gary's going to crack down on everybody. But you have to remember, it's not just be, not just one person that can dictate everything. You have to go through a lot of different hoops and a lot of different uh, chambers and houses and votes to really get things done. And these three people, they just get it. They understand what this means and how important it is to move forward. So I just want to say, like, every time you hear, like, some bad negative news, just remember, there's people in some pretty high places 
fighting for the things that we want. So let me just think about that in the comment section. And let's move on to our next piece, the Cardano Virtual Summit. So uh, first of all, the reason why Cardano went up is because this virtual summit, I think there's some announcements. Also, it probably went up because there was a big announcement between Cardano and Chainlink, which we just saw. They were the only two that were actually up. He's like, I think I forgot the other one. So uh, congratulations. Looks like Cardano is going to be working a lot more closely with the folks at Chainlink. And then just so you know, you can go to this right now. And it's the most, it's the most interesting summit I've attended because usually it's just like the Zoom boxes and people are talking and you almost fall asleep. And uh, this one's pretty cool. Like you can just like go hang around in a virtual world. When you go up to people, you can start to chat if you want to. You can, uh, and then there's all different types of, it's kind of like you're, you're on a field watching a movie. And then you can go to all the different types of, let's see what else is going on. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, governance, main stage, community, catalyst. And you can go to any one of these that's going on right now. And you can interact with people. You can watch what's going on. You can uh, see the actual uh, event itself. I'm just going to go through here. Usually it's actually people talking. It's not a bunch of these uh, slideshows. Ah, there's one. Who's this guy talking? Increase interoperability on the networks. But um, that's how you go around. And you can also find little things like gamification. I think it's a very interesting concept. It uh, makes it more engaging, that's for sure. And that's what's going on. So I can tell you this. There have been some rumors about some big announcements being made here, but uh, only time will tell. And I'm not even going to tell you the rumors because it's just they're rumors. So there's no reason for me to say it. But I do think there's a couple of moderate to huge announcements maybe made during this uh, seminar. So uh, we will see. And I will link uh, how you can actually get to this virtual conference, which is going on today and tomorrow. And I believe you can actually watch the replay. So uh, check that out uh, at your leisure. So good news going on in the crypto space. And that is fantastic. But I need to talk to you about a little bit of uh, some middle of the road, maybe even some might consider this a little bad news. And what's and what this is, it was a good piece uh, written by Bitcoin.com. It talks about a rocky start for Bukele's Bitcoin law in El Salvador. And uh, when I first read it, I was pretty standoffish. I'm like, yeah, right. It's just FUD and people aren't really, you know, there's, there's spreading a false narrative. But in reality, you have to take a look and take a step back and just challenge yourself and say, this might be true. And uh, from what I was seeing, I mean, nothing's 100% accurate, but I, when I look at this, I'm like, this does make sense. This makes sense why there's probably having, they call it a, um, a rocky start. I just call it a speed bump. And uh, that's the best way I can say it. So what's going on here? So first of all, this all got rolled out about a month ago or so. Check me in the comments. And then uh, people were talking about different protests against the president, Bukele. But when it says here on September 15th, there was a, the, one of the biggest protests against Bukele's government. And poll, so and, and then we, there was thousands of people that came through, which is where you have seen other pictures. It's just like a, they like they like have a, a picture of like 20 people and they make it look like hundreds, but it's not really the real case, just an angle of the picture. But in this one, they're saying, yeah, there's been protests lately and there's been thousands of people, which I think is really not too bad considering the fact that uh, El Salvador has between, I think, four and five million people. Uh, depending on uh, which census information that you get. But you have to remember this, though. The polls still suggest he still has an 80% approval rating, which is amazingly high for anybody in uh, an office. I don't see that's possible, but okay. But here's the thing, and this makes sense. Not completely adopted. While everyone saw the pictures of fast food chains accepting Bitcoin, we've all seen the one with McDonald's. We've seen the ones with like Wendy's or whatever else where it says, we take Bitcoin here. As payment, the truth is that Bitcoin is still far from being accepted universally in the country. This is from Florence uh, Olivares. She says there's lines and lines in every Chivo ATM. And uh, Chivo is the, is the app that the El Salvadorian government put out for its people. It's a Bitcoin wallet. And they put $30 worth of Bitcoin in each of these wallets. And she says uh, people selling their Bitcoins for USD. Uh, yeah, but Bitcoin is a success in El Salvador. When you say it like that, yeah, there's a lot of people, and it only makes sense, they're going to exchange it for the for the U.S. dollar. Why? Because look at the volatility we've had. If you are making, here, let me show you something. If you are 
this is the gross national income per capita in El Salvador from 2010 to 2020. Last year, the average salary, 36.50 per capita. 36.50. Then I want you to let that sink in. If you get $30 from the government, that's pretty big money, in all honesty. Uh, and then let's just say that, you know, we had that black, we had a, you know, things go down, it, it reduces by 20%. You're like, what the heck just happened? I don't have the time and the patience to figure this out. I'm in a developing country. I got $30 and now it's worth $24. Uh, this isn't, this isn't what I signed up for. And I'm going to change it out for US dollars because guess what? As much as we complain about the dollar and it's going away and it's really awful and da da da, guess what? It's still stable. It's still stable. And that is just the truth. And I don't care if you are thinking to yourself, well, well, these people should just hold on for, for a year or two years or six months. When you're in a developing country and you have to feed your family, I'm sorry, you're going to put it into US dollars. Not everybody, but that is what it is. And I think here's one of the big problems. And it states here, the mass of Salvadorans still don't understand what Bitcoin is or its use cases. The government has a big job in educating its citizens about the true value of Bitcoin. And here's really what it comes down to. Think about you, when you first heard of cryptocurrency and digital assets, the first one you probably heard was, of was probably Bitcoin. If you just got into it, it's probably Dogecoin, sorry. And uh, when you heard about these things, you're probably like, that makes no sense. Why would I ever get into that? And then you took the time and the effort and you actually learned about you. Okay, this is what I wanna get into. I wanna be a speculator, I wanna get into it, right? Not a lot of us are putting our entire livelihood into Bitcoin and crypto. Some of you are, I don't think, but I don't think a lot of you are. And if you're doing something like this in El Salvador, you have to understand that those people need to under, they need to comprehend what Bitcoin really is. You know, it, it gets you out of the monetary system. You don't have to rely on the central banks. There is a finite supply, meaning they can't just print it to oblivion like in Venezuela, like, like all the money. It is set in stone at 21 million. I really do think it's only 18 because of everything that's been, been lost. So you have something that is so valuable and so rare, and it is the most secure computerized network in the world ever has seen. In that, I, I think those are the things, the pieces that are missing. And if we can't uh, determine or, or actually talk to these people about uh, what it actually is, they won't get it. On top of the other factors I just talked about, which was, hey, I got to feed my family. We're starving. We got to pay the rent. We don't want to get kicked out. We got to put this in US dollars. So when I say it's, it's a speed bump, it's a big speed bump, but I think it can be overcome with time. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then lastly, I just want to say this, I'll be at a, uh, a speaking engagement. Uh, it is called the Conscious Crypto Traders. It's between October 15th and 17th, and uh, it's mostly for traders. I was asked to be a part of this to give an alternative opinion because they're like, Rob, we know you're not a trader. I'm like, yes, that's very true. But uh, I am there to talk about uh, what I do as far as taking profits, how I do things, how I... Um, legally minimize taxes and the things that I'll be doing as far as like an updated, if you want to call it an exit strategy, but really it's what I'm doing with my crypto gains as opposed to exit strategy. So I'll be there talking at this on top of all a bunch of uh, uh, other traders, which, you know, hey, <laughs> I'm not, uh, these are all the trader experts. Not that I am, ah, Diddy. And uh, not that I'm like a big, huge fan of everybody here, but uh, hey, it is what it is. So I just here for to give people an alternative um, opinion about what to do, because this is where it's gonna be a lot of uh, new individuals. And uh, that is it. So look, uh, there's a link in the description for that. If you wanna check it out, that's fine. But that's it for today. So uh, first of all, if you stuck with me, I wanna say thanks so much for uh, hanging in there, I appreciate it. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are very time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks so much, I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.